is to make it as game-like as possible. To get your guys' body back. To be able to get out there and be able to compete at the highest level at all times. Think about this practice, think about what y'all did together as a group. We're just sitting there on walkie talkies. You guys are the ones out there executing. There's a lot of good shit on the table. And we're not even close. Offensively, we've got a long way to go. Defense, who knows, sky's the limit for you guys. So just understand, there's a lot to be done. And a lot to be done. There's a lot of good stuff, there's some things we can correct. Let's just be sure we continue to work together. Keep locking in mentally. Because if we can hear the call, know the call, and do our job, I mean, you guys know what you guys are doing? There's some good shit they're putting on tape right now. But it's still, we got about 32 days before that first game. So think about how much better we can get in 32 days we're doing this. We haven't been together long. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. Keep grinding. See you guys tomorrow. We got special teams. Competition is competing in every single thing you do. I don't care what it is, whether it's uh, on the football field, whether it's in a card game, whether it's in a uh, basketball game, I, I don't care. A every single thing in life is about winning. Uh, winning anything that you do, whether it's who's gonna fall asleep first, whether it's who's gonna stay awake the longest. It's, it's every single thing is how can you compete at every single little thing, because every single thing matters, and it's about building that mindset, that championship mindset to never lose at anything. All right, here we go. Let's start off with a little competition here. Every single day we go out on the field and we compete. When you, the, the end game is about winning and going onto a field and we compete at the highest level in the world. So you have to have that habit that you're going to compete all the time. And the players need to see that even coaches compete, that we're competing every single second. And you want to watch them go against each other. And you could put a guy up there to potentially want to catch a punt. He might never have caught a punt in the, ever in his life. But the mentality is, is I don't care that it's a punt. I'm going to catch that thing. Go! As you grow in competition and you grow in that mindset of you never want to lose at anything, you grow on the field for it doesn't matter what the score is, it doesn't matter what the situation is, you're gonna have that mentality that I'm never gonna lose. And I'm gonna compete and do everything I can to win. And you want that to be never ending. Never, you want the guys to, to, when they walk off the field, compete at stuff. You want uh, the coaches to compete at who's the best. Because the people you wanna be around are the ones that always think that they can win. So that no matter what the situation is, we're always gonna be able to come out on top. That you love the most unlovable part of me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mic check, one, two, one, two. I got the energy to make it look like a fool. The thing that's impressed me the most, you know, we got to start working with Pat last year has just been, you know, how much of the game he already knows and how slow the game is for him already. As soon as Pat got in here, you, it looked like he was a five, six, seven, eight year vet. And so, you know, I always thought like, I don't know how much more he can improve from year one to year two, uh, just because his, you know, year one, his rookie year was so great, but I'm excited, man. I'm excited for him. Me, you, me, you. Hey, regular. Watch your hand call. Load it. Oh. Hey, energy, fellas, energy. Get you one. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah, boy. Here go, here go. The biggest thing I learned was definitely the way how he approached it. Coming in, he's laser focused, dialed in. The way how he just prepares each and every Sunday for each and every week. Takes the film, study serious, the preparation serious. You know, it just shows on Sundays. So that's the biggest thing I learned um, from dressing. So um, we will take it back to 
a few practice plays. Um, this one specifically, um, we was in a one high shell. I read play pass with Russ. In my mind, when I see play pass, you know, obviously the tight end protecting as well too. I'm thinking of shots, like deep shots down the field. You know, that's what this offense has been trying to do. Like, you know, once I read play pass, I was thinking shots. So um, court, I was expecting double move. You know, he sailed the out, uh, but his shoulders wasn't fully committed to the out. So I just stayed on top and um, speed turn and made a play on the ball. So, you know, that's one of those things that play recognition comes very vital in sp uh, specific plays like this. So, mm. yeah, he's one of the plays. So this was third down. During this whole OTA period, we was, our emphasis, main emphasis was, you know, who could win the third down battle. And we had competition against the offense, uh, how many wins could each of us get. And of course, whoever wins the third down battle, um, coach mentions it in the team room. So um, this was a major emphasis throughout practice, through OTAs. So this is man all across the board. And it's just mano on mano, you know. So um, backside isolation, you should expect fade balls. You should just expect isolation routes. So, you know, I just played it from top down, expecting a goal ball, look back and just made a play. So, you know, the big emphasis was you know, third down is money downs. You know, you got to win those type of th downs. So, you know, so you got to make plays. <laughs> so Court went up. Um, he jumped earlier than I did, and he had it with two. And these, the type of plays where you like, you know, you got to finish until the play is over. You know, you never know. What could happen? No matter if he have his hands on the ball, if he made a good play, you know, you just always finish on the ball, no matter how it looks, no matter what the play may be. But the main emphasis is just to always finish. It's great. You see someone make a play and it's like, all right, you know, I got to step up. It's my turn. You know, just seeing the whole secondary make plays, like we just a talented room. I'm um, talented group that's special. So when I see Jay make a play, like you said, you know, motivates me to make a play. Because when you know you got guys like that in the secondary uh, that's capable of making those big time plays, you know, it carries over, you know, for you to make a play. All right, so we're playing, this is our joint practice against, uh, against the Cowboys and um, we're working like red zone here. Obviously they're in an empty set. A lot of times in empty sets to the offense's three receiver side, that's where the concepts are gonna go. So a lot of the times teams, defensive teams like to run zone to the three man side because you know, it could get a little complicated for a defense to cover all those guys. So what you're just seeing here is a double move by uh, their number two receiver. And you know, this number three that's on the ball is trying to occupy us. And then they're just trying to get our eyes caught on him had this low guy run a double move up and through. Jonas was actually in a really good spot, you know, just playing with great eyes. And I think Jonas is the reason why this ball was thrown so high. And kind of like, you know, Dak tried to put in the spots where he thought only, uh, you know, only his guy could go grab it. So Jonas was in a good spot, made the ball float a little high. And, you know, I was able to make a play. Most of my, most of my interceptions at safety are because of, of plays like this. You know, there's, there's a few where, it's just great individual effort, like in man to man or something like that. But when you're playing like this, like you got to think like our rush, he's feeling Chubb over the top, you know, in this in this rush plan. He's feeling the, the pocket kind of cave in from the middle. And uh, Jonas is in a great spot, too. And he has a time, you know, he has a clock in his head of, of when he needs to get the ball out. So all of that plays its role into into making a and making a play in the back end and, and get, getting an interception. Nice 
I like those. Oh, I'm sorry, my kid. You see the Hold on, no. It's this. It's this. That's what you got. I'll never forget that. An afternoon kickoff between the Broncos and the Bills. Nathaniel Hackett has decided not to play his starters today. So it'll be the Bills number ones going against the backups of the Broncos. That's the best evaluation you could possibly get. We want to see if we can come out there and play versus the best in the league. Washington settles underneath it at the one, five to ten. Is hit, runs out of a tackle, 15-20, and he is loose, 25-30. The rookie doing a great job, lowers his head and shoulders and bangs out over the 35-yard line. Attempt of 55 yards for Brandon McManus, and McManus is perfect from 55 yards out. Play fake, Griffin floats one, open receiver, then is caught in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Denver, that is Eric Sauber. Guys, man, but it'll be love forever, man. It's the Broncos country forever, man. Um, I, I can't say enough about you know that team, man. They got a great quarterback, great head coach now. This guy's limited.